again and welcome to another episode of Jadu Lifestyle where you can have a limitless life. We we bring you information that can help you as a business owner and the general public to improve your life, to experience your creativity, to actually we encourage you to actually get involved in different facets of your life, like your hobbies, things you like to do, things like that. And what we do every month is we actually bring a guest or several guests that has different expertise that they can give you different options that you you may be able to utilize to engage in all your 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 personality, your hobbies, your 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 life. And we vary with our, our concepts so that you can be an all round person. So today on this episode, we have Melissa Lilly. Hi, Melissa, and welcome. Good morning. Thank you good for morning. having me. Good. It's good to have you here. And our guest want to know a little bit about you first. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? What is your... Uh, background, what do you do, and how can you contribute today? Well, we'll find out later how you can contribute. <laughs> okay, well, um, I am a native Floridian. I live in Northwest Bradenton. I um, am, am the mother and single parent to one daughter, Caitlin, who's 17. Um, I am in the mortgage business and insurance business have been uh, in the financial world probably since I got out of high school. So um, I don't like to tell my age, but over 30 years ago, uh, worked in banking and then made the shift over to insurance and um, added mortgages. So I'm in the wholesale mortgage arena and um, uh, I provide mortgages for per, you know purchase and refinance. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that. And uh, now we will go. What I want to do with our talk, and just so you know, we have a little bit over uh, 20 minutes or so, but um, I want you to, to tell me some of the things that a business owner, you know, we've just been coming from lockdown, um, business closing, not being able to work, not being able to come out of the house even. So we're just now getting back in some states to, uh, um, you know, working again or even getting involved in the community. So tell me, what do you feel a business owner needs to know right now with re regards to maybe financing, mortgages, or um, anything else that they may need to know to help them? Well, um, with the COVID-19, and now we have um, another issue, you know, rioting and things like that, uh, we can't do business like we used to. I had to rethink how to do my, you know, how to conduct business, how to get leads. Um, when you're out and about every day, seeing people face to face, they, you know, they click, it clicks in their mind that, Hey, I know Melissa does mortgages and I I've got a lead for her. But when you don't see them every day, when you don't see your network partners every day, it's not that they forget about you, but they're just not always thinking of your best interest and vice versa. So I did have to rethink, and I think all business owners um, have to rethink how they're doing business um, during and after the pandemic. Um, the way I had to change is I don't really have warm leads anymore. I do network online and the Zoom meetings and things like that, um, but I did hire a marketing company that focuses on mortgages and knows all the, um, there's a lot of laws and rules with mortgages. Um, they know them all, and they generate lead referrals for me. So I think if, you know, if your business is struggling during COVID, um, you have to think outside the box and think, okay, how else, how am I getting business now compared to how it used to be? Yes, I totally agree. I had to also revamp my um, business, and yes, going online has been 
um, a bigger option for me than, you know, having a brick and mortar building now. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I did have to rethink what I did. Um, so now let, uh, what what else can you tell us? Um, a lot of us are finding that we we need to hire companies. Do you have any advice on? you know, what we should look for when we are hiring those companies, you know, what part of our business we should support with that? Definitely when you're hiring a company, look at reviews. Um, I didn't use to ask my clients um, for reviews. Uh, a lot of my clients, you know, became friends and things like that. And I never sent that, hey, will you give me a review on Google or on Facebook or what have you. So reviews help when you're hiring someone um, just because they tell you they can do something um, in relationship to your business uh, doesn't always mean that they can. And sometimes you waste some time and money um, with people who really, you just have to do your homework. You know, definitely reviews, definitely, you know, reach out to other people that maybe they've done business with or what have you. So, um, like I said, I did have to rethink my business and hire a, you know, a marketing company. Yes, I, I totally agree. Um, you know, sometimes we think of our friends because we trust them, we love them, we've been friends with them, they're our best friend. We think they're the people that we need to go to ask questions regarding, you know, financial stuff or things like that. So <clears throat> that was one of the things that I recognized, probably not early in my business, but later, simply because of lack of trust in trusting people. So I trusted the people that I, I felt safe with. Um, reviewing and do you have any, um, suggestion as to what we should look for like for instance how did you pick the marketing company that you hired well i because in the mortgage business um you know i work with about 20 lenders top five are the ones that i really uh do business with um one of my lenders has a company um it's actually a community group for mortgage people and it's called aim a I M E. And, um, so, you know, I went in, it was a free service to us. So I just went in there and looked around at what they have to offer and they have discounts, you know, for all of us to different things. One of them was a marketing company called lead pop, which I had read a book, um, that they wrote. And, um, I decided I would give them a try. I did tell them right up front though. I'm not signing a contract. You've got a month to, show me something and um you know i'm in my third week right now and and um you know they built a new website for me they they showed me how to do lead funnels and funnels to my website and things like that so um you just have to research in your business who it, who are people using what what is working because like i said you can waste time and money and and right now in this day and age we don't have that luxury. Yeah, um, one of the things that I found was that, um, you know, we we attend networking groups and we tend to want to do business with the people that we meet. In fact, I kind of feel a little bit um, guilty if I don't use the people that I meet in the networking groups. The problem is that sometimes you find one, two, three businesses doing the same thing in the networking group. So how do you pick like one out of the other? Do you feel, uh, do you use people that you meet in networking groups or do you just go randomly, I, not randomly, but go with your gut kind of thing? No, I definitely use people in my networking groups and um, anyone who knows me knows that I'm not very fond of Zoom meetings, but I'm really pushing myself to do about three Zoom meetings a, a week for networking now. Um, and so, I, I mean, of course, 
let's connect. Uh, we have 40 or 50 people that we can pick from. Yes, I use people in my network groups. Um, sometimes if they don't know my industry, though, like for marketing, I can't use them. There are just too many laws and rules. And also, sometimes I think, I don't want to mess up a friendship because I do consider these people my friends. Um, I will refer people though all day long. And especially, you know, when I've seen what you all can do, what my network partners can do, definitely refer them every chance I get on Facebook um, or uh, Snapchat or what have you. So um, while I do use people in network and, and patronize their business when they were open before COVID, um, I do have to be choosy um, when it comes to marketing for mortgages. I'm curious if you if you if you did that, well, like you did, you you picked somebody and then you you had somebody from your network and group came and say, hey, I do the same business. How come you didn't pick me? Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry. I think I'll be probably putting you on the spot here, but what would you say to them? <laughs> um, if it was, it was, I, I actually did pick someone from our network group um, to do the same thing that this other company is doing. And um I don't know if it maybe was because we're friends or what have you, but they kind of had that lapsidaisical attitude of I'm going to get to it when I get to it. And I don't have that attitude. Um, I, I, I'm one of the, yes, I want the answer now. I want things to happen now. Um, so like I said, I do try to use people in the, in our network groups and um, always. And if I can't use them, um, then I definitely refer people to them so that they know that I, I do um, make them a priority. Okay. Now, one of the things I did with my business early on is I actually created a technique that was different to the, the regular person in my business. I'm a body worker, as you know, and um, when I first started out, I, I was a late bloomer, so I started out late in my life, and I had to build up a clientele. Of course, when you went to school, they told you, you know, what their suggestion was with respect to pricing and things like that. But what I did is I developed something that is very different to what most body workers do, and it's very effective in its um, uh, result. The results. Um, the thing is, though that it's very, I can't refer my clients to somebody um, in my industry because they don't really do the same thing I do. Um, how do you separate yourself from other people in your industry? Oh, that is a good question. Um, just in our area, I bet you if you had a group of 40 people in a room, there'd probably be 10 of us that were mortgage brokers. Um, either at a bank, a retail bank, or wholesale. So, um, of course, customer service, um, re response to people. So I, I'm always very responsive. Um, check my phone all the time. If they call, text, they have my direct line. Um, and being a broker, locally owned and operated, we, um, you know, we can make adjustments to what we're paid and things so that we can accommodate a client because sometimes, you know, buying a house and financing a house is a very huge um, undertaking and maybe they're short a couple hundred dollars or, or what have you, just on closing or what have you. So we, we do our best to make things happen um, for people. And I have a team. So when I'm not available, you know, they're, they're available and responsive. So that's the way we make ourselves.